Welcome back. This is sixth grade ELA. I am Miss Kelly. We're going to be working on lesson three today. We're still working in the novel Hatchet. Have you guys been reading? I hope so. I told you this is a great, great novel. Good read. It keeps you engaged. I love it. All right. So lesson three is about the characterization and text evidence. It says the lesson objective is, repeat after me, I will. Very good. I will continue to gather text evidence to describe the main character, Brian, by reading chapter two and making annotations on sticky notes. I love that statement. And what I really want to point out is that there's an a positive in that statement. Can anybody tell me where the positive is? That's right, Brian. Describe evidence to describe the main character, comma, Brian, comma. Look for the commas, look for the noun that refers back to you know, another naming part of the sentence, a positives, I love it. That's a complex sentence. That is what, exactly what we're expecting you guys to write and do as you make your annotations and notes. All right, so let's talk about a sentence. As you guys know, you have a culminating writing task at the end of this unit, an essay. And you're going to have to decipher and, you know, put down some judgments about whether or not you think Brian's actions aided or hindered his survival. So in order to do that, again, this is sixth grade, we want complex sentences. Let's go back to the basics. Let's talk about what a sentence is. So my slide here says, a sentence contains a subject or who or what of the sentence, comma, a predicate, part of the sentence that tells what the subject does or is, and has at least one verb, and is a complete thought. Sentences have to make sense. They tell you who did something and what that person or thing did. All right, let's talk about a fragment, which is not a sentence. All right, a fragment is a phrase or part of the sentence that cannot stand on its own as a complete sentence. It does not make sense. It is not a complete thought, and so, in sixth grade ELA, we definitely want to make sure that we are writing sentences, again, complex sentences, and not fragments. So let's do a little exercise really quickly before we jump into our next lesson. So it says here that we're going to write an S if the words form a sentence. We're going to capital, capitalize and punctuate the sentence. We're going to write an F if the words form a fragment. Change each fragment into a complete sentence. So it's not good enough that we just write S and F in the blank. We also have to change and correct all these sentences to make them complete sentences. Are you guys ready? Give me a thumbs up. All right, let's go. I'm going to step over to this side and let's begin. Number one says, this is where we're going to write S or F. It says, is going to visit his father. Is that a complete sentence or a fragment? Right, it is a fragment. Who is going to visit his father? It doesn't tell us, but we know from our story who is going to visit his father? Brian. So, how will we change this fragment to a complete sentence? Let's write it over here. We will begin with Brian, and I need a capital B because that is a proper noun and it's the beginning of the sentence. Brian is going. To visit his father. Now, what punctuation do I need to put at the end of this sentence? It's just a statement, right? So all we will put is a period. Now that is a complete sentence. Very good. All right, move on to number two. Brian knows a secret. Who? is the subject of the sentence. Brian, what does he know? A secret. So that is a complete thought, but it's just not written correctly. So let's go ahead and fix it. It's not a fragment, so it is a sentence, but let's correct it. So we know that Brian needs to be capitalized. And what else needs to take place? Punctuation. What would I put at the end of that? A period, right, because it's just a statement. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. Brian knows a secret. 
a secret. Here we go. All right, number three, gives him a hatchet. Hmm, what is that? Sentence or fragment? What do you think? Who gives him a hatchet? We don't know, do we, based on this? So that would make this a what? Fragment. Excellent. So we need a subject. Who gives him a hatchet? Brian's mom. Very good. So let's write it over here. Brian's mom. B R I A N apostle S. Brian's mom gives him a hatchet. What punctuation goes at the end of this? A period. Very good. Next, the pilot. Is that a sentence or a fragment? Is that a complete thought? No. We don't even know what the pilot does. It just says the pilot. So that is definitely a fragment. Let's change that to a sentence. We're going to begin a sentence with a capital what? Letter and end with punctuation. That can be a period, question mark, or exclamation point. So let's begin. Capital T. The pilot what? P-I-L-O-T. We know he has a heart attack. And we end it with a period. Now that it is a complete sentence. Last one. The plane crashes. What is the topic of the sentence? The plane. What does it do? Crash. Is that a complete thought? Yeah, it is. We don't have more details, but yeah, it kind of is. We just need to fix it and make it into um, a proper sentence. So we're going to put F for sentence and let's change it. Let's make that T capital. All right, so D. Precious. And then we need to add our punctuation. Very good. All sentences need to begin with capital letters and end with punctuation. So that was a short little exercise on fragments and sentences. I hope you guys um, you know, paid attention to that. That is definitely going to help you again when you're writing your essay. You do not want to have fragments in it. You want complete sentences. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide. And hopefully this will be all good. All right. So it says you have spent time reading Hatchet and using annotations to gather evidence about the main character, Brian, as he reacts to being left in the plane alone after the pilot has a heart attack. So today we will continue reading Hatchet and gather evidence about Brian using annotations. By the way, we're going to be on Chapter 3 today. So we're going to describe Brian based on the evidence in the text. All right, so you will need a copy of Hatchet, your 10 sticky notes, your reading journal handout, and your evidence chart that is also in your student materials. Now, how does Brian use prior knowledge to guide his decisions at the end of Chapter 2? Remember, we talked about that. He saw the pilot depressing buttons, and so he did that too. So that was prior knowledge that he used to help him at the end of chapter two. All right, so this says read the rest of chapter two, but we're going to go ahead and kind of move on from that. It says with the partner starting with the paragraph that begins with the microphone. And as you read, make annotations on your sticky notes when you notice something about Brian's words, thoughts, or actions. And this is the evidence chart that is in your student materials that you're going to be using as you continue working. All right, and so let me just skip around in chapter three. We've already read chapter two, so we're going to move ahead a little bit. And we're going to read a little bit of chapter three. It says, going to die, Brian thought. Going to die. Going to die. Going to die. His whole brain screamed it in the sudden silence. Gonna die. He wiped his mouth with the back of his arm and held the nose down. The plane went into a glide, a very fast glide, that ate altitude and suddenly there weren't any lakes. Now remember, he's looking for lakes, why? Because he wants to land there. He feels like that gives him the best options to survive the plane crash. So he's looking for lakes and he doesn't see anyone. So let's see if he, what happens. It says, there. Not quite in front, but slightly to the right, he saw a lake. L-shaped with rounded corners 
and the plane was nearly aimed at the long part of the L. Coming from the bottom and heading to the top, just a tiny bit to the right, he pushed the right rudder pedal gently and the nose moved over. Again, he spotted a lake. It's an L-shaped lake. He wants to try to land the plane there because it'll help him to survive. All right, so let's talk about this crash. Are you guys ready? Because this plane is coming down. Gravity is at work. The engine is not working. It's going to come down. So let's see what happens. Then everything happened at once. Trees suddenly took on detail, filled his whole field of vision with green, and he knew he would hit and die, would die. But his luck held, and just as he was hit, to just as was and just as he was to hit the cane that don't make sense. and just as he was to hit he came into an open lane a channel of fallen trees a wide place leading to the lake the plane committed now to landing to crashing fell into the wide place like a stone brian eased back on the wheel and braced himself for the crash but there was a tiny bit of speed left and when he pulled on the wheel, the nose came up and he saw in front of the blue of the lake. And at that instant, the plane began to hit trees. There was a great wrenching as the wings caught the pines on the side of the clearing and broke back, ripping back just outside the main braces. Dust and dirt blew off the floor into his face so hard he thought there must have been some kind of explosion. He was momentarily blinded slammed forward in the seat, smashing his head on the wheel. Then a wild crashing sound, ripping of metal. And the plane rolled to the right and blew through the trees, out over the water and down, down to slam into the lake. Skipped once on the water, as hard as concrete. Water that tore the windshield out and shattered the side windows. Water that drove him back into the seat. Somebody was screaming, screaming as the plane drove down into the water. Someone screamed, tight animal screams of fear and pain, and he did not know that it was his sound that he roared against the water that took him and the plane still deeper down into the water. He saw nothing but sensed blue, cold green. He raked at the seatbelt latch. He tore his nails loose on one hand. He ripped it until it released, and somehow the water trying to kill him to end him. Somehow, he pulled himself out of the shattered front window and clawed up into the blue. Felt something holding him back. Felt his windbreaker tear. He was free, tearing free, ripping free. But so far, so far to the surface, and his lungs could not do this thing, could not hold, and were through. He sucked water, took a great pool of water that would Finally, wind finally take him and his head broke into the light and he vomited and swam, pulling without knowing what he was, what he was doing, without knowing anything, pulling until his hands caught at weeds and muck, pulling and screaming until his hands caught the last in the grass and the brush. And he felt his chest on land and he felt his face on the coarse blades of grass and he stopped. Everything stopped a color that he had never seen before, a color that exploded in his mind with the pain, and he was gone, gone from it all, spiraling out into the world, spiraling out into nothing, nothing. Wow. He crash lands this plane in the lake. Remember, he wanted to be on the side of the lake, but he actually crashes it in the lake. It starts to sink. The window is shattered. He pulls himself free. He gets hung up, but he pulls himself free. He rips his jacket and he makes it to the surface. He doesn't even think he's going to do it, but he makes it to the surface and he pulls himself on land and he basically just passes out. Oh my God. And remember, he has a head injury because he slammed his head, but he survives. Oh my God. He survived. This kid lands a plane and he survives. What a wonderful triumph. But again, survives to do what? Where is he? What is he going to do? What is he going to eat? Does anybody even know he's missing? Is anybody even looking for him at this point? Got to read to find out. All right. So let's pull out our journal handout. We are now on chapter three. 
there are three and four is what it says actually let's see so again we did this before on chapter two it says pretend you are a journalist writing a newspaper article as if you were with brian during the crash how would you describe brian what evidence in the text makes you think that how would you describe him i would describe him as heroic what we just read shows that he was able to pull himself up from almost dying he survived a plane going into a lake and he's here to tell the story so i would describe him as, as heroic how would you describe him Think about that. If you were a newspaper journalist and you were interviewing him, what would you say? So we talked about this a little bit on the last lesson, but if you have not finished it, take a moment and do that at this time. All right, so we are now at the end of this lesson. I do have a question for you. We read chapter three. Here's my question. What was the shape of the lake? We know that he wanted to land the plane in a lake but what was the shape of it do you remember l shape very good one more question what item was ripped as he removed himself from the plane what item was ripped do you remember that the windbreaker that windbreaker is going to be very critical as he goes forward so keep that in mind as well all right, so in this lesson, you learned about Brian and how he reacts to the impending plane crash. You also practice synthesizing the information you gathered to develop and support a description of Brian. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you learned something. We know he survives, but survives to do what? Stay tuned to find out what happens next. See you next time.